Scanning. Identity authorized. Welcome to the Secret Superhero Club Podcast Network. Welcome everybody to the Animation Station Podcast. My name is Josh, and joining me today, I have Harold Story from the Toons Tunes Podcast. How's it going, Harold? What up? Doing great. All right, Harold, now, um, thanks for coming on the show. This yeah. is your first time on the show. First time. First time, last time on the show. Uh, <laughs> one and done, always. One say. and done, that's it. I said that once. Um, so, uh, tell us a little about Toons Tunes. Yeah, man, so, you know, I would had an idea to, uh, you know, I really wanted to talk about anime um, with my friends. I'd always done that. And so, when I was really thinking of what I want the show, the show to entail, I thought of the things that were big for me whenever I was, like, in middle school, like, high school age. So I was thinking, like, you know, the two big things for me were music and anime. And really it's because those are the two things that are so, you know, such a uh, a point of contention for people. Because, mm-hmm. one, if you like anime, you're probably not considered, like, the cool kid <laughs> back in the day. Yeah, no. Like, it's you're, not like, like, the weird kid. Who's, the, who's, who's, like, really big into anime? Like, it's like, isn't it a Famous rapper? Famous people? Like, uh, Kanye said Kanye something in about a, yeah, it. Yeah, Kanye's uh, into rap. And then uh, Kim Kardashian uh, talked about her Keanu's favorite. into Outlaw, I mean, uh, uh, Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. He wanted to be Spike forever. So it's like, now there's all these people that are saying, like, so-and-so is my favorite anime. But back then, it was like, oh, like, you watch that? Like, that's so weird. Which is weird because I feel like every, like, guy my age was watching Dragon Ball Z, but then we weren't talking about it. Yeah. So I'm like, what the heck? Like. What's the deal? But at the time, you don't know because it's like, oh, man, I don't want people to think I'm dumb because that's, like, the most important thing to you at that moment. But it was the same way with music. If you're not, like, with the status quo of what everybody's watching at that time, people are like, dude, what are you listening to? Like, you don't listen to this whatever's on KJ right now? What's your problem? And now that's so common now. And so, you know, it was just an interesting parallel that it's, like, such a big, like, closeted thing back then. And so prominent now and, like, honestly, it's, like, the popular thing. And um, so it was just, you know, that was the idea behind the show is I wanted to get people on that I thought were interesting just because we were all into, like, the same thing. And oftentimes, well, like, uh, some of the same music, not all the time. Mm -hmm. But it was just cool to see us from so many different walks of lives. Like, I have people that do – I've had people that do, like, uh, that are artists. I had Robot House Creative on. um. Uh, you had some uh, composers on too. Yeah, I recently gotten um, some really great composers. Uh, we had Jim Lang that did the music for Hey Arnold, and mm-hmm. then Jim Venable that did the music for Powerpuff Girls, Samurai Jack, Foster's Home. Um, he also did My Life as a Teenage Robot. So love. He my was life he was network robot. by as I call it. He was on Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. So um, it, it was cool to start out as like, and I still love having like local people on. So, you know, I've had, like, designers, um, people that work in the food industry. I've had the, the owner of Tamashi on, mm-hmm. uh, Wakana. She's great. And it's gotten to the point where it's like, okay, like, this is cool, and there's so many different people on. But I just had the idea not that long ago, honestly. It was kind of embarrassing that it was like, why am I not asking composers of my favorite shows, like, if they want to be on? Like, this is a no-brainer. It's music and animation and one thing. And so, you know, I just kind of sent out some cold emails like, hey, are you interested in talking about this at all? And, you know, to my surprise, both the gyms were into it. And, you know, Jim Lane came in and played some music live on the show. And Jim Venable sent us some tracks that we released as like a one off like radio show. So it's it's been pretty cool, cool, like great reception. And it's cool when people are like into what you're doing, you know. And those were those were uh like demo tracks for stuff like Fosters and Powerpuff Girls. So yeah, he said stuff it was that... some stuff that was like some of it was just like some test music. I think uh Samurai Jack was just test music, which if you listen to that you can hear like, oh okay. Like I that sounds like Samurai Jack. Um some of it was like uh the Fosters was a demo. He sent us the demo of the intro and then the final version of the demo or of the uh, intro. And then, uh, yeah, some of it was, uh, and then the Powerpuff Girls was um, some more, like, demo-type stuff, and some of it was test music. But it's cool, because you could hear, like, in the Powerpuff Girls stuff, you could be like, oh, that's that sounds like Fuzzy Lumpkins is, like, walking up. <laughs> like, you you could hear it, and it's, like, pretty iconic. And so it's, it's really cool, and it was really interesting, like, not only to have the tracks that he sent us just, like, completely, 
unwarranted. <laughs> but, uh, you know, to hear some of the stories behind, like, how some of these themes came together. Like, he had really good – you you would think it would just be like, oh, I was just sitting in my computer and, like, wrote, wrote it or, like, it was inspired by so-and-so. But it was, like, these crazy roundabout stories of how, like, they got these gigs to be able to, like, write the theme and, like, where the inspirations came from. So it's cool to hear the story behind it, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, see, that it's cool that you went for the musical route, where I went for the voice actor route. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, I'm I was more interested in the people doing the voices, and you were more interested in the music. Yeah, which I think that's really cool. Like, you went a completely, basically, the same type of thing that this podcast is, except you were like, I want to do music instead of the voice. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, and that's, I don't know if it's just the nature of it, because I know you yourself are a voice actor. And, you know, the, of course, for, for you, that would be a natural pull, because you're like, okay, I kind of know, like, the business, I know what to do, I've, like, recorded stuff. And with me, it was like, I, I did lo- I love animation, anime, and cartoons growing up, but really my big thing was music. Like, mm-hmm. I played music for a while, um, and was always like it was always my thing i was always like that guy knows music like if you want like a band or like want to know like the new band that's going to be like cool in like a couple of months i feel like i had like kind of that rep just in my group of friends people will be like oh yeah like he knows his shit um since you are a big fan of music do you know the band honor bright honor bright yeah oh, see I, I went and talked to big game and i'm like <laughs> well here's this band you've never heard of I'm well like, is oh. this is this band from New York, little upstate New York band. Now, what's uh, the story on them, though? Uh, well, it's it's actually um, our friend Liam DeCosmo from Hilt Radio, so our sister oh, podcast. Cool. He was the lead singer of Honor Bright. Gotcha. So, I should have just said yes. You yeah, just like, say what? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he's one of the ones like when I sent you uh, the uh, the list of the tracks for uh, your show, I put some Honor Bright stuff on there. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, that, that was his band. I was wondering why that sounded familiar, but yeah, is yeah. yeah, that but was his band. So when I uh, so that was another part of the show that I don't really talk about that often. Was um, when I have guests on, I like to make like a Spotify soundtrack or a, a playlist for them, and so I'll ask them for some of the because we end up talking about music um, in the in the episode when I have something on someone on typically. And, uh, yeah, I usually just like to make it a, a – it's just a little bit extra content, you know. It's mm-hmm. like you heard us talk about it a little bit, but here's a whole playlist curated by this person. Like, go check out, like, what they're into. And mine was all K-pop. <laughs> it was pretty much hey, just K-pop. Okay. <laughs> well, like, I like the EDM man. music. I like that, like, yeah. dancey <laughs> – exactly, yeah. It's like stuff. something where it's like, ba-da, ba-da, you know, where you can get into it. Yeah. And you're just like, yeah. The, uh, this is the, like the, happy music. That Samurai Jack uh, track that he sent me? Mm-hmm. Part of it, I feel like, is from uh, the episode where Jack goes to, like, he has to, some, for some reason, go through, like, this rave Oh, that's yeah, happening. yeah, the one with the, uh, and, well, see, that's cool because, like, they have the little girl in that one. Yeah. And then when they do season five of Samurai Jack, she's older, and she comes to Jack's rescue, like, later, because, like, yeah. Jack, helped, Jack helped her. So, yeah, it's, it's really cool. It's, yeah, and because I, I remember that episode. Well, when, like, when, I, when I saw her, I was like, yeah. I know exactly <laughs> who you are. But it was cool to hear it. I'm like, I'm I think this is from that. Like I don't know one hundred percent, but I'm pretty sure that's from it's, it sounds like one of the motifs used in that at least. Mm-hmm. If it's not directly from like something they used from that, it sounds like a vein of what they were, were going they for were going in that, for epi- that in that episode. episode, yeah. Nice. Now Harold, you wanted to talk about something very special. <laughs> so we watched Outlaw Star, except for me, I forgot the last episode. I That's didn't okay. get to watch the last that episode one's, of Outlaw Star. Not really Star. important. It just ties yeah, up you know, the entire series. Yeah, it's just the ending episode. <laughs> um, they got to defeat all the bad guys. Um, everything gets resolved with the ley line. So, <laughs> um, so, so we uh, we watched all of Outlaw Star. So, was when did you first see Outlaw Star? So, I think like the intro was for a lot of people. You know, like when the original run on Toonami. And I just remember it, you know, premiering or, like, coming on, like, around the same time in a block of, like, shows that were just, like, already had built up clout with me. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, it's, like, the Dragon Ball Zs, the, the the Gundam Wing, the Ronin Warriors. And here comes this one. And I'm, like, this is kind of dope, actually. Like, I remember just it just being on one day. Like, I don't remember really, like, knowing about it before and just seeing it kind of premiere. And you're, like, oh, this is kind of cool. And 
I remember watching it, but it was funny to think about later. I was like, I don't remember ever finishing that because I don't know if they ever finished their run, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think they. I don't think they were able to finish their run on two. They Nami. showed it a little bit on like the Saturday Night Block too. Yeah, but I don't know if either one if they ever finished their run. So I was like, oh man, like that's crazy. Um, well, it's kind of like Yu Yu Hakusho. Exactly. Like they just yeah. like stop Yu Yu Hakusho. They're like, this is too long. We can't do any more of this. So no more Yu Yu Hakusho. Yeah. Well, that one was good too. And then he, you know, gets to where it's like Yusuke is part demon, and you're like, what the heck? Like this is dumb. I, in my opinion. I uh, yeah. I I never liked. But that Demon Yu-Yu World Hakusho. tournament, boy. Oh, you didn't like the show at all? No. Well, okay. it's like, that's fine. Like I, I like there, there's a lot there's a lot of shonen stuff that I like. Yeah. But then there's a lot that's just it's all the it's all the same. Yeah. Like it's all the you tropes. always know there's gonna be a tournament. Yeah. Like when I saw My Hero Academia, like when I like I didn't I didn't I haven't <laughs> watched that much of the series. Yeah. I've read a lot of it, so I was reading a lot of it, and then it's like tournament. Like well, it's, I knew it. It's I the knew trope, it. man. It's yeah. the trope. And like, it's right. It's like, because those things are. They know the things that are going to resonate with their audience, you know. They're, Dragon Ball, like, all of the Dragon Balls have had a tournament. Yep. The World uh, Martial Arts Tournament. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only, oh uh, well, I was thinking Tenchi Moyo was like, oh yeah, that wasn't really a, wasn't really a shonen. It was a harem. Tournament. It was a harem. <laughs> <laughs> no tournament in that one, except for Tenchi's love. Yeah. Um. Okay. So <laughs> you watched, you watched, um, the, the OG Toonami. So. Tell me if you remember this. Okay. So it was a show. It was like three girls living on a spaceship. They were like on the run from somebody. There was like an older-esque one, older being like maybe like 25. And then there was a younger one who was like maybe 16. And then there was like a young, young one who was like maybe like 10. And they were like on a spaceship, like three girls, and they were being kind of like chased by these this other group of people and it was like all women it's like men were like very scarce and like they had these uh like like the bridge crew of like the ships that were fighting them yeah had like these masks and it like went over their eyes so you could just see their mouths but like there was like no men and then like a person a man was like born on the ship and they were like oh my gosh it's a boy it's naked. What is this? We don't know what this is. <laughs> There's a weenie. Um, what that, would like, that have I don't. Been? I don't know what show that. I remember it being on Toonami, and I've never been able to see it since. I only watched like two episodes of it. Oh my! god. But I've always wanted to watch it. I'm I have no idea what it was called. On some like on some like live googling action here. I'm trying to look it up now. But yeah, like if anybody knows, what is that? I don't. Like, I don't know if, if that anybody even... if anybody knows. Let me know what the heck that and it was stupid on thing was. It was on Toonami. In, like, the golden years. Yeah, the golden years. Because like, I remember it was either, like, before or after Outlaw Star. Because they did a lot of space stuff. Yeah. Because that was the majority of what we got with Toonami. It was like, it was space. Oh, yeah, that was, like, the very much the vibe back then, for yeah. sure. Well, yeah, Tom on, on the ship and everything. Man. I, I have no idea what that was called. I'm going to have Dude, to just look. I'm just going to have to do a search of, like, all the shows that... We're on Toonami, and then just click on them and see if I can find it. This kind of looks like it could be it. Martian successor. Would you Nadesico? have a picture? Martian successor Nadesico. Very possible. There are a lot of girls on That's that. What was, I was it like, on the first Toonami? Thing I thought, yeah, it was like I looked up the Toonami stuff. That may be it. Ninety-seven to ninety-nine. Let me look at it. Let me look at the plot. But three, yeah, uh, is it say three girls on a ship and they find a boy? Well, that's what I was like trying to figure out. Because there's um, like, because yeah, like that picture that you showed me is just all girls and Uno boy, Uno boy, Uno boy. No, it doesn't seem like this is what that would. Dang be. it! I wonder what the like heck. The primary that was. protagonist is a boy with a mysterious past. Is it, so. Well, I mean, that could have been episode one uh, that I've saw that I saw where boy like pops up like he's because like it's like a baby and they're like caring for the baby huh. and then like it like grows and it's like a full grown boy and I they're mean, like this might be what? it then i mean there's mm. a lot of girls it seems like there's one dude but is there like a young one yeah she has like pigtails yeah and white well, hair i say pig I, I say yeah but like all young anime girls have pigtails it's like that one with like the red ponytail like holder things mm. i don't know man Maybe. you got I don't me know. stumped on i don't one. know yeah I felt like that before, though, because, like, I would talk to people about Knights of the Zodiac. 
oh, that's bizarre. And people would be like, huh? And I'm like, dude, like, what do you mean? It was on, you watched Inuyasha, right? It was Saturday night. This came on, like, right around that time. And so, but that was one of, another one of the cool guests I was able to have on was Jarrett Reddick from Bowling for Soup. Oh, yeah. And they did the cover of Iran by A Flock of Seagulls, that 80s song. And that was the intro for Knights of the Zodiac. Did you ask him about 1985, yeah, the best Bowling for Soup song? Oh, yeah. I was like, actually, we talked about that a little bit. It was like, oh, yeah, you know, you have, like, the classic ones. But uh, one of the interesting things that I wanted to bring up to him was uh, how people always think that they do Stacy's Mom, a song by Fountains of Wayne. For some reason, people always think that Bowling for Soup does that. Really? And he said that people would bring signs and be like, play Stacy's Mom. <laughs> so they learned how to play it. That's amazing. So they play it. But yeah, he was like, yeah, we don't know why they think we do that, but we learned how to play it. We play it all the time. That's freaking awesome. That's hilarious, dude. He's really cool. He actually has a movie podcast. Really? It's called Jared Goes to the Movies. Yeah, it's cool. They they like shoot the breeze for like 30 minutes and then they talk about and so it's like, like all, this show. It's like old and new movies. Yeah. So like this essentially. Show. <laughs> we we talk nothing for 20 minutes before we record. We have said nothing so far. Uh okay. even now, even we're even recording now. now. Yeah, we're not even talking. <laughs> um it's just dead hair. Um, so, so you saw, like, I remember watching it on Toonami, um, Outlaw Star and whatever that other thing is. Um, <laughs> I remember watching Outlaw Star and Toonami when it first came out. And then I watched it back when I worked at the movie theater. Um, so that was back in 2007 because my friend Holly had the DVDs of it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen Outlaw Star in years. Can I watch this? She just let me borrow it. And then I haven't seen it since. I remember it being really, really good, and then when Funimation got the rights to it, they put it on Funimation. So Hannah and I watched one episode, because we watched the first episode, because like, it was this thing where we thought that the voices were atrocious. Really? And, like, same thing that we did with Tenchi Muyo. Like, I always remember, like, I in my head, like, Tenchi going like, no! Like, that the whole yeah. entire time. He's like, yeah. Ryoko! And it's like this really <laughs> weird version in my head of what he's supposed to be but then when we watched it i was like oh that doesn't sound anything like what i was imagining same I thing without lost it was bad like it's not yeah. so like same thing without lost star like i remember it being like really bad but then when i watched it i was like it's actually good like it's not bad at all like i don't know what it is but like in my head yeah like i just like associate like all of that or like that late 90s early 2000s like dubbing is like, like real campy. not really good yeah and yeah. campy and like people trying to find themselves but then you go and listen to it, you're like no it's actually really good like yeah i mean it's they, great there's yeah. like a there is I mean, there, they, there's overacting but that's yeah. anime it's just the like, nature of it th- if you listen to the japanese dubs like there's overacting i mean in japanese like there's overacting in japanese that just happens every time well, like yeah. card captor sakura oh my god uh, she like all the time like <laughs> the whole entire time and you're just like yeah you don't need to do that just, yeah we were just talking about food wars earlier too like okay people don't react like that when they eat food like can you guys calm down like i mean i react like that when i, <laughs> when I eat food you gotta really like it yeah i'll have what he's having when I had that when i had that uh um uh that little uh citrus cookie oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Su box. box thanks box box by the way hey, shout out to box uh go to box box.com to get yourself <laughs> a delicious box of authentic japanese yummies um that thing was good though it was but good. i like, was like i want to be like oh and then, <laughs> like my bra would have flown off and like it would have been awesome no nah, i mean it was pretty good yeah i was i mean i'm not gonna lie i was a little suspect of of like going in i was like uh, i hope this stuff isn't garbage and i have to like Make like a nasty face in the middle of our our video, but no, it ended up being pretty good. Yeah, and I still have those delicious little curry crackers. Oh yeah, those are pretty. Those good. are gonna be that may be my snacker tonight. <laughs> I think I'm gonna take a bath, eat my uh, eat my little uh, snackies, and light, eat that beef jerky that I got. Light some, <laughs> light some candles. Light some candles. I got candles. There you I go. Got some Yankee candles. <laughs> well, you know, we fancy here. We fancy. Um, yeah, like I, I like I remember it being like not as good, but then when I, we watched it on Tune uh, Funimation, it was like this is actually a really good dub. It's not bad at all. I yeah, I really like. I don't think there's anyone on the show where I'm like, ugh, not them again. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I think everyone in that's pretty great. I will I will say um, I want to give a shout out to uh, one of the friend one of our friends on the show, um, Ezra Weiss. He voices uh, Fred Lau. Oh yeah, on on the show. Hey Fred, 
he's Gene Starwind. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I, he's like, one of like the first like characters where I'm like that dude is gay. Oh, like yeah. on an anime, they and, played like, it down though in Toonami. They yeah. really cut out some of the. They did. But then when was... you watch, then when you watch the DVD, or oh, that's what I did. Later, I was like, like, whoa, oh my gosh, he's like up there. It's like um, up there with. Uh, did you watch uh, Gurren Logan? Yeah, I can't remember that. Is his name Sid? The uh, the, the like the lime green haired guy is like, oh, Kamina, <laughs> let's take you, <laughs> let's get you into something more comfortable. And Kamina's like, no, nah, I don't like this. I'm good. I don't like this. He's like, oh, Simon. That's See, not the yeah, way he sounds at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's funny. Like it's. I definitely, you know, and there's a lot of those four kids dubs too that are like, but I don't know necessarily if that was what version we got on Toonami, but wouldn't surprise me. But there's a lot of stuff that's cut out, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And we've talked about this before when we talk about Toonami on my show and stuff, but you'll watch something because a lot of that Saturday Night Block was some of that stuff was like the unedited versions. I mean, that was the only way to watch Gundam Wing. And so, yeah, like, you, Gundam you Wing. You couldn't watch the one that was on at like yeah, 3 o'clock. We talked about that because it yeah. would be like, they would say stuff like destroy instead of kill. Catro is being terrible still, no matter what, no matter what iteration you're watching. Uh, but it's just small stuff like that. They didn't show blood very often. Well, that's like in Inuyasha. Like I would, I like the, I, I watched a, a good chunk of Inuyasha on like regular Toonami. Um, so it'd be like three o'clock, and like it was fine. But like then when you watch it on the Adult Swim. He's like, damn and hell, and I'm like, whoa, Inuyasha, like, <laughs> Easy, <Kagome's> semi swears, <laughs> not that kind of language wrong. Yeah. Kagome, like, like I think, uh, I think he called, like, I think he called Shishomaru an asshole once, and I was like, oh, Inuyasha, sit boy, that makes you sense, can't though. do that, <laughs> sit, <laughs> bad boy, <laughs> a bad doggy, rub his nose in it, uh, man. Um, so let, let's let's kind of kick off first. Uh, who's your favorite character in All Star? Man. I really, you know, it's kind of hard to not just go off the bat and just say Jean because I really do like Jean. Mm-hmm. But to me, I, I think the really the unsung hero is Jim. Yeah, I love, I Jim. love Jim Hawkins. Um, I love his episode um, when they're on the <sighs> space station with the, him. Front to back, that episode is incredible. It's the, honestly, it's one of my favorite episodes in anime. Yeah, because it it like gets that it tugs. Oh yeah, and you're like oh. Maybe this will this will be the thing that because like you know that what is her name? I don't. I can't man, remember. See? You know that she's <laughs> you know that she's part of the uh, the pirates. Yeah. What what are they called? Shoot. We watched this show. We don't know anything about the show. We just wanted uh, to talk about it. It's like the que- is the queen Quin- Quinley Quinley. Well, uh, like the, oh the K pirates the, the, the Tin Paw. Yeah. Um. So she she's part of that group, and you're like yeah. We know she's a pirate and she's a bad guy. She wants to kill them, but there's uh, was always that part of me. And even though, I, like, even when I watched it again, I knew that she was gonna get, she yeah. was gonna die at the end. But then there's still that hope. And it's like maybe she'll turn around. Maybe she'll go on that date with Jim. I thought, yeah, I was like, oh man. And then and they'll get an ally. Well, when they're fighting too, before the fight even starts, she's like, I gotta get back. Mm-hmm. And you're she's like, oh. she's ready to get back. And then. Jim didn't want to go on the mission exactly. because he didn't want to be late. Yeah. And then she just he just thinks he When they thought they were going to leave, remember? Mm-hmm. And then they get a little the ship gets a little messed up, mm-hmm. so they're like they go back. So he's actually pretty excited. He's like, "Yes." And then he goes and you know he, she's he, never going to show up. He thinks up. that she stood him up. Yeah. And it's like, oh, "No, it's... that that episode hit me in the feels, man. I was like, dude, this is like I was saying front to back cuz there's some good exposition. You're like, "Okay, who's this little girl?" And then you see, like, the two cats that are, like, the two mm-hmm. arms, I guess. That was yeah. kind of goofy, but whatever. Well, yeah. It, it's – let's just it's go – let's show. just go in this. <laughs> it's Outlaw Star. <laughs> yeah. It's goofy as hell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're like, okay, this is a pretty cool character. And then the fact that her and Jim end up interacting and then they really hit it off. And then, yeah, that the part where he's just, like, waiting and you know she's not going to come. You're like, yeah, you're man, like, this, is, this is good. This and is a, he's just heartbroken, too. He's just sad that she didn't come. Yeah. I'm just like – well, you know, Similar. the the cool thing about that is that it really – and I know you, you know that they're like humans from Earth or whatever, but in a way it really humanizes – it humanizes Jim and reminds you like, man, this guy's a kid. Yeah. 
he's like 12. Yeah. Like, it's like, so I don't know if that was, you know, you like to think that's the intention of like the people that are writing the story, but you know, if, if for them to come across that way and like really humanize them that much, I'm like, wow, like great, great job. <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah. I literally like, I, there's a lot of things that I remember about the show. But when it got to that episode, I was like, I remember this episode. Mm-hmm. Like that—that's the episode I remember the most. Yeah, that and like I, I will always remember that episode, and I will always remember uh, Asha Clang Clang, uh, Katal Katal, the Katal oh, yeah. Katal. That it, just her saying that Aisha over and Klang over Klang. and over. It's like it's just H Clang Clang, the Katal Katal, the Katal Katal, and you're like, yeah, I know, we know, we know. You, you know, when like I was fourteen uh, times first watching that, I thought she was saying Kataro Kataro. Kataro. So I've said that for years. <laughs> And I accidentally had the subtitles on when I was watching the DVD, and it said, you know, it's like C T R A L, and I was like, what? So I looked it up, and I was like, oh, it's like the realization, like, man, I've been saying this wrong my whole life. Well, it's one of those where, like, my brain is stupid and doesn't work very well, <laughs> but I'll remember stupid crap like that. Oh, yeah. Like, I'll remember that, and, like, I remember the two, uh, like, I... and audience knows exactly what I'm talking about because I say it all the time. Like, I remember the two guards in Tenshi Muyo, the, the red and the blue, Azaka and Kamadake. Like, I will never forget their names. <laughs> I will as always I remember Azaka and Kamadake, but I'm like, yeah. But you couldn't tell someone your license number. No. Look, uh, yeah. Nope. Yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> like, you remember the funniest things, but it's because, you know what, I think makes us remember stuff like that is and even when we're talking really, about g gundam yeah like the hand of mine it's so things. tied it's so ingrained with a time in your life you yeah. know what i mean and you remember being that age and rushing home to watch this stuff and so i think it's one of those things that makes the show stick to you like stick with you so much more like that like i'll, I'll remember the, like the most random bits of shows and i'm like why would i possibly even know that like like you were saying with the guards and tichimuyo you're like why? <laughs> and like, and they didn't do anything either. They There's no significance. They literally sat there at the steps of the temple and were like, <laughs> "Yep, it's a it's a nice day outside." Like, "Yep, nice day." Or like, when somebody would walk by, they'd be like, well, "Hey guys, must be must be in a." Hurry. <laughs> but it had a profound impact on your life, man. Yeah, it's like, well, and the same thing with like, for whatever reason, Yu Gi Oh. Like, I loved Seto Kaiba. Mm-hmm. Like, he's 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 a shit, but <laughs> he's awesome. But I love him. And, like, I'll always remember, like, the whole, like, my grandfather's deck has no weak cards. Yeah. And you're like, bro, you were playing Beaver Warrior. <laughs> Your grandpa's deck has some weak cards, yeah. bro. He did that baller thing where you ripped the blue eyes in half. It's <laughs> That was pimp. It's like, oh, this is your kush. <laughs> like, like, my grandpa's card. And you're like, tough Yugi boy. Like, these are my cards. <laughs> this is my game. <laughs> yeah, like, what you mean, bro? Yeah. And it's like Exodia. But like if I would have been Kaiba, I'd been like, "Yeah, it's illegal now. You can't use it." Well, yeah, like what? Oh, oh no, he got, his, he got the, he got the Exodia thrown overboard. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, on the ship. Like Beavis and Butthead. That was dumb. The kid. Uh, yeah, I would definitely do that if I was him though. Like the thing you do when you're a kid when you're losing the game. Okay, new rule. I can't lose. Yeah. <laughs> like it's really Kaiba knows how to do it. Like I'm gonna pay like fourteen dollars. Let's uh, just make a rule in the company. No more Exodia. <laughs> and what do they do in Yu-Gi-Oh? Made a rule. No more Exodia. That's so funny. Uh, but anyway, back to Outlaw Star, oh, yeah. the thing that we should about be that. talking about. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess we can go, and go ahead and do a quick rundown of the characters. So well, let's talk about the characters, and then we can talk about the, the series. Sure. Um, so we have Gene Starwin, uh, vo- voiced by uh, – we're going to do the English – that's fine. Because I, yeah. I watch the English dub. I watch the dub, too, yeah. So uh, we had Robert Wicks. Uh, then we have uh, Jim Hawkins. Uh, sorry, Jim Hawkin. Jim Hawking, Hawkins is uh, Treasure Planet. Oh, okay. So, which basically Outlaw Star is Treasure Planet. <laughs> um, voiced by uh, Brianne Sedell, which um, if you watched uh, – did you watch Dot .hack? Yeah, I watched some of it. Elk. Oh, okay. From Dot Hack Sign. Everyone, that's the thing I've noticed with like a lot of the voice actors from like around that time. It's like, oh, everyone does everyone else's voice. That's mm-hmm. great. Uh, Emily Brown as Melfina. Uh, we have uh, Lenore Zan as Aisha Clan Clan. Oh, my God. That Katow Katow. The Kataro Kataro. Uh, and then Wendy Lee as Twilight Suzuka. So our main. Suzuka! Uh, our, main, our main group. Um, and then where's Hilda? Hot, Hot Ice Hilda. Hilda. 
Uh, Mar- oh, it's Mary Elizabeth McQuinn. Um, she is actually the major from um, Ghost in the Shell. Oh, okay. So she's, yeah, yeah Major uh, Kusanagi. Makoto Kusanagi. <laughs> um, and she, she was... Uh, she was a great character in that show, yeah, too. Yeah, fun, fun little bit of trivia, which I was going to talk about in another thing that she voiced, but I didn't get to talk about it. Uh, she was married to the voice uh, – she was married to uh, Darren Norris, who is the voice of Cosmo in Fairly Odd Parents. Oh, what? Um, That's dope. So they were married for a long time, and then they divorced, so then she started – Mary, uh, she started dating and uh, is now engaged to Steve Bloom. What? Who, yeah. Oh, she upgraded. Exactly. So I'm like, <laughs> so. I don't need a Cosmo in my life. I yeah, need so, a Spike. So Major <laughs> Kusanagi is now engaged to Spike Spiegel. That's cool. Yeah, it's it's cool. Um, She's like, I had to go ahead and upgrade my Cosmo here. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Like, well, <laughs> up this. Um, so. We've got Jim as our favorite, and you know we'll, I love we'll, we'll Jim. put we'll put Jim uh, Jean as you know the number two. But of the female cast, who was yeah. your favorite of the female cast? You know, I really, I don't know if it's the uh, really the product of watching this show, and then a little bit later watching Cowboy Bebop. But Suzuka, I yeah. really loved her story, and then you you also learn oh this is the same person that did um uh. Uh, from Cowboy Bebop, what's her name? Oh, Faye. Faye. Yeah, Wendy. Yeah. And so you're like, oh man, like I could really see even in like the way that they carry themselves and like the way they look. You're like, I can kind of okay, that's kind of a parallel there. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if, if that always made her stick out to me, but she was just so like B A whenever she appeared. Oh yeah, she and was... she has like that wooden sword. She's like blowing holes out of like uh, buildings with like a wooden sword. You're like, what the heck? Yeah, it's... so I thought she was really cool, and she's she provided a lot of comic relief, even though mm-hmm. she's very deadpan. Well, that was a great like you always have to have that straight man character because you've got Jim, who whenever uh, Twilight's not there, I'm like, yeah, she's he he's gonna be the oh, yeah. the, straight the voice man. of reason, yeah, because Gene is for a space pirate he like he's like he's, like space sick, yeah, like at the beginning, That's which makes funny. zero sense, yeah. like. Cool. Well, they talk about how he's like in that, you know, his dad died, yeah. and which which makes sense. That makes sense of why that would be, but it's just funny. You're like, dude, you're supposed to be like this big space guy. Mm-hmm. Like, he's like, you're... <laughs> um, space cherry, they call him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it was it's funny because uh, Jim's like a uh, badger and he's like, we're gonna pop your cherry, Gene. I was like, and Jesus it's like, Christ, damn, yeah. I'm like, all right, I guess we're gonna do this. <laughs> Um, that's graphic. It is very graphic. Um, I, I, my my problem was like, I was never a fan of Melfina, and even rewatching it She's again, annoying. I was just like, yeah, you're just the damsel in distress that yeah. has to be saved, who's also the ship. Where am I? Yeah. Why am I here? Actually, can I throw a caveat on Suzuka and put if Hot Ice had been able to stay? Because I thought she was awesome, and she took an L like a true champion. Mm-hmm. You know, like the the pirate that what the last pirate the the girl is trying to go get um, the outlaw star. She's like flying towards it, and Hilda does like the grapple thing and grabs her, and like they fall in that star together. I'm like, man, she took an L. Yeah, like, Hilda's like, a, like a champ. She's a badass. Like it's one of those like I I wish she would have been in it like way more. Yeah, but the fact that like w- her role in the series loved her role yeah well she was just you know supposed to be there to get them to the, yeah get, get to them the get them star. to the outlaw star and, and then I'm she like, died for their sins <laughs> it's true she's very much jesus <laughs> hot ice jesus <laughs> um uh and then i always liked uh uh aisha aisha yeah um mainly she's crazy like her and her and jim together oh yeah we're just like this is trouble like don't put those two together in a room <laughs> like whenever, whenever they were like left alone together, I'm like, they were up to some sort of mischief. The two of them together, um, so yeah. So I, I guess we can kind of both say like, yeah. I'm like, I've I've never been a fan of that like damsel in distress. No, I mean type of like I'm she's more of a an fan of like character though. Like it's cool. Yeah, that the, the whole way that like she has she a joins good, the crew and then she's just like she has a good story. Yeah, 
She's trying to figure out who she is, like Ex- what she is. Which which is nice. Like having a good story is great, but you can also give the character, you know, some sort of substance. Yeah. Like she just didn't have any substance for That's me. That's true. She like, was I like kinda there. like BA characters. Like if you have a character who still like like I always go back to Kim Possible cuz like she has complex she's she's a girl but then she's she'll also kick your butt yeah it's like i always go back to kim possible as like one of like those girl role models that is weird for me to like say a strong woman yes yeah, a strong woman Was that character. christy carlson romano though christy carlson romano yep wow <sighs> ren she... stevens my god <laughs> And she's still fine too. I just saw a picture of her the other day. I was like, "Yeah, like she's and she's going to be in the new Kim Possible little remake thing." Oh, I don't I didn't know what know she's going to do. Nice. Yeah, they're going to do live action. Huh? Um, oh, wait, a live action? Live action? Is it going to be a movie? She's going to dye her and, hair and red. People don't. Well, she's not in it. Oh my! Well, I mean, I mean, she's she's in it, but she's not Kim. Oh what? Yeah, they they got a new girl to be Kim. Huh? Um and. The Kim Possible people are not liking it. Like, like the, those the the hardcore fans. People are, don't and I'm like, like anything ever. Just is what I've just learned. wait. You just know, wait. like the whole thing with your name being mm-hmm. like the subtitles getting messed up when we showed it. We had people had wanted to sh- see a movie with subs for the longest time, and then we finally showed one and it got messed up. And it's like, man, whatever. We're just doing dubs from now on. Like whatever. Yeah, and we'll do. We're gonna do that sub dub talk. On, oh yeah, on yeah, your yeah. show one yeah, day. Yeah, we got to get that. We're That's gonna, gonna do be a, a, be a thing. <laughs> little exclusive here. I guess we can drop for your audience, but been wanting to do like a you know it's like a, such a big point of contention uh, among anime fans that you know the big you know do I watch it sub do I watch it dub and it's almost to the point where it's like standoffish whenever you're talking to people about it. Um, we literally had someone when we showed Akira, we had someone that like, you mean if you're one of those hardcores Akira yeah. I hate that so much. <laughs> like, like it's the thing like, like like manga and manga. I'm like, yeah. just, just say, say it, it how you want yeah. to say it. Like, if it's like uh, Hannah's brother Ben, manga, and I'm like, and I'll just be like, I won't correct him, and I'll, but I'll just say manga because I'm used to saying manga. Yeah, and it's the same thing with the Kira. Well, it's like Caribbean and Car- Caribbean. Yeah, it's the same word. Yeah, it's just like it's just a different enunciation. It's, it's okay. People can have different. It's but, it's all right. Yeah, we like literally had someone. We were giving free tickets away. Because we just were doing like a promo thing, it was, uh, it was like National Board Game Day, and we oh, had like, tabletop day. Had, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. And we had a thing at the tower that was like, hey, if you come play games, uh, we're gonna give away some cool stuff. So we would go to tables and, um, stick around like until the end of a game, and whoever won that game, we're like, hey, here's some free tickets to. We were showing a few different movies that month, so we're just like, we're kind of letting people pick, and um. You know, I told this girl we were showing Akira, and she was like, well, is it subbed or dubbed? But, like, re- in a real, like, aggressive way. And I was like, uh, well, it's the dub. She's like, I'm okay. I'm like, really? Like, when else are you going to get to watch this in an awesome theater like this? Like, in a neighborhood like this? Yeah. Because right there on 23rd Street. Like, you could go watch that and then go to the pump. Yeah. When else it, will you be able to do that? And if you guys aren't from Oklahoma, like, oh yeah, 23rd Street is, like, the BA part of, like, uh, Paseo. Is yeah. It Paseo? Yeah, no, it's yeah, Paseo, yeah, it's right, right yeah. about the Paseo. I was like, it's, it's not Midtown. It's Why technically I the keep, Uptown district. I keep thinking Midtown. I'm yeah. like, no, because I'm thinking Midtown because like, freaking I had Tomashi earlier today. Yeah. I'm like a Midtown on my brain. Yeah, they call it the Uptown 23rd district. But I mean, like, yeah, it's like, it's, it's a bunch of cool stuff around there. Yeah. And, and, oh, uh, uh, like on the way there, like I, I go, I always go by to that, uh, the dude's mural where the bicycles on the tree. Yeah. That's so cool. So man. weird. <laughs> it's like, you get the shit up there. <laughs> I know. It's so different. And it's just a cool part of town, but it's like, you know, it's just the nature of it. You know, you're going to do cool stuff and people, it's always going to be not good enough for someone. Yeah. You know? It's like, well, if you don't like the dub, then you don't get these free tickets. Sorry. Well, it's like, just come watch it and like, and shut up and like, just, when else are you going to see it? It was it's so like, packed when we watched it, but it's it was like, like, whatever. We watched, um, we watched the dub of, uh, Akira for our first anime. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Did you watch the 2000 dub or the we watched 89 the, We dub? watched the 2000. The one okay. with uh, Johnny, Johnny Bosch and, and Joshua Seth. That um, one's a good dub. Yeah. Yeah, the original. If you watch the original dub, the original, mm, I, I can concede the point on that. Be like, okay, yeah. maybe watch the sub if you're going to watch that dub. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, you watch the 2000 when it's good. I mean, it's like, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, we sa- thought so, too. The same thing with uh, <laughs> uh, the... <laughs> 
the uh, when we watched Gundam Wing on the Spalt Waltz. Oh like, my god! There's nothing wrong with that dub. There's just parts in the it. The dramatic. <laughs> There's like the little girl is going up to Hero, and she's like, "Mister, are you lost? Hey, I said, are you lost?" And which is already like unnatural dialogue as it is, and then Hero just comes with the, "I have been lost since the day I was born," <laughs> and everyone in the theater just erupts with laughter. It's but that so was funny. great. That was a great moment. It like, was f- so funny. There was multiple points in that movie where people that were one laughing. dude trying to get the trying to get his line out. Yeah, I took one of those out. It's just, that was crazy. But that was that was a great because like we all like I don't know anybody that didn't enjoy like when we were in that film. No one was like or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, no, yeah. Everybody enjoyed the film, but having that little extra <laughs> like those bits in there just made it great. Oh yeah, it's magic. Um, oh, that's good though. But so yeah, I mean, I, I, I going to Outlaw Star like again going back and watching this dub after so long. I was thinking that we were going to have some, you know, bit of problems. Some groans. You're like, But Ugh. watched it, and I'm like, this is good. Like, it's actually really, it's really good. Solid. And I don't know if they touched it up, maybe, which is very possible. Like, yeah. Funimation got the rights. It's Blu-ray release now. So they may have touched it a couple things up, but I'm like, yeah. yeah. It was, it was well, good. I got that special edition box set, too, because of the yeah. thing you posted. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no, I mean, I wanted it, because, uh, like, that's how I was able to talk my uh, my financial advisor, a.k.a. my wife. <laughs> I was like, listen, I drew up a PowerPoint presentation. I was like, here's why I should be able to buy this. It is. And she on... was like, pretty excited. She was like, that's only that much, and it's usually a hundred. She's mm-hmm. like, go ahead and get it. I was like, hell yeah. Yeah, I uh, made a mistake and bought the wrong one. Like an idiot. Congrats, you played yourself. Yeah. So like, if you look over there, I don't have the red one. I have the standard blue, that's like sitting up there. And I was like, oh, yeah. I clicked the wrong one. I don't know what oh, I was thinking. Man. I clicked the wrong one. And I was like, it, it was also super cheap. That yeah. ended up being 20 bucks. Oh, yeah. And so I, like, I just, I think I just I saw happened that to click too. the wrong. And I was like, yeah. when it came in, I was like, yeah. I was like, it's a little bit smaller than I thought it was going to be. And it wasn't that hard plastic. And I was like, oh. And I looked at my thing. I was like, stupid like, idiot. It. The thing is pretty sweet. Like It has like a a whole like custom case. That looks like the uh, the uh, the ship, mm-hmm. the XGP, and um, and then there's like a hundred page art book, and then some special features. But yeah, like the Blu-ray looks great, man, and it's great that it's on a the way that they did the skip features, which I did like the intro, but um, it was to where you could skip and know exactly where you're going. Yeah, when you hit the like the next chapter, it would start you out like right where you needed to be. Which really like those intro bumpers? I really like those because it wasn't that the guy that did Jet's voice. Yeah, it's uh, he, Bo Billingsley. Yeah, yeah. And so a boy has a right to dream. Like that's so sick, man. Like, and that that's in that uh, tsunami bumper. That's mm-hmm. like iconic. Oh man. Um. So we we start the series off, uh, with. Well, no, we start off with uh, uh, Hilda being chased by pirates. Yeah. Um, but then we go and we, our main, our story really takes place when we meet Jim and Jean. Yeah. And they're in the in, bar. In the bar. And they're, what are they? They're just, they're just like a jack of all, like there's a jack of all trades or like what, what is their, what are they, what are they? I, they were like mechanics, I guess. And then kind of but, like but guns a, for hire yeah, too. Yeah, but yeah, he's, and he's like muscle. Yeah, it was a. I mean, I think they're just trying to do whatever they can to make ends meet. To be honest, yeah. Jim happens to be great with like electronics and. I like how Gene like goes half a that mechanic. Episode, like half yeah. the first episode, he's just like, "Y'all are gonna wear a shirt. I don't need it." He and just, all the like, he goes like goes into the bar like shirtless, <laughs> and uh, like all the girls like I'm just like that like especially that one waitress is like, yeah. Ah. Like, well, it's like well, I would good too. Ex- I mean, look at him. It's a good exposition, just because it's like you know you see that Jim's really the even keeled mm-hmm. and. The waitress is like, oh, my God, I was so worried, Jean. And then Jim's like, is that why you have your hand on her ass? And you see Jean's, like, grabbing her butt or whatever. So it's like you get a good intro, and you're like, okay, I'm starting to get a feel for these. Like, this guy is, like, that devil may care, like, real aloof, like, out there guy. And then this the kid, funny enough, is, like, the, the you know, yeah, button down, yeah. like, the voice of reason. So it's good exposition, you know. You know it's there for that. So. Yeah. Um. So they run into Hilda because they're going to do a mission for her. like she hires yeah, she them, hires them to, as, like, bodyguards. as bodyguards. Yeah, um, hires them as bodyguards. He's like, "Don't open this 
you know, package. Obviously, you open the package, out pops a naked girl, <laughs> Melfina, like you do in anime. As it, yeah, as you do. I, I I was trying to remember. I was like, how did they do that in Toonami? Oh yeah. Did they just like throw like way more smoke on her? No, just they like, uh, pff, smoke. They. Uh... It looks like she has like a tube top and then like some like. Oh, did they jeans. do one of those draw on? Yeah, so it looks like she has like minimal stuff on, but it is. It's like a little bra, like small bra, and then um, it just looks like like yoga pant type stuff. But yeah, they do put clothes on her in that one in yeah. the tsunami um, version of it. So then uh, they have to race to space. And yeah, because the pirates come. The back. pirates are coming. Yeah, yeah. And they they find them and track them to like the building that they're at. And then we, because like we, in the in that series we see one of the coolest things that I I mean it hasn't really been duplicated other than Psycho Pass, where we have like one of the coolest guns. Oh I've yeah. ever seen the freaking caster. Oh, it's so damn cool. It's so crazy, and it's for seeing it so much. It only, like, to be honest with you, it didn't click um, until, like, after I finished, you know, watching it in preparation for this episode, that that's a magic gun. It's like spell ca- spell caster. Caster. Mm-hmm. And I never thought, I never put that together for whatever reason. I'm like, oh, it's like, because it's a caster of magic. Like, and I just, for some reason, it never clicked with me. And then I just kind of had that aha moment. I was like, oh, duh, it's called a caster. Like, that yeah. makes sense. It's It's good. It's one of those where you're like, Oh, I wish I had one of those. Well, I know, like the yeah, I like how they build it into the story, and it, they almost make it you know, like folkloric. You're like, oh, I have a number eight and a number six. You're like, what are the numbers? Like, what is all these? Like, what are these shells? Like, so sick. But it, it's cool, and it it's I like I like it, how it, it, I, I do like uh, when he fires one. Yeah, he doesn't know what it is. He, like shoots it, and it's like, well, that was pointless. Yeah, <laughs> it's like what? Well, he's got a dud. The last one that he had, like, he's like, it's a dud. <laughs> But it's a big deal whenever he has it, you know, and they're in a fight. People are like, oh, he's got a caster. Like, you you know there's almost like this folklore behind it. And so it's like something people know about. Mm-hmm. And so that's cool, like a nice little piece of exposition they build in too. You're like, for for other characters that he's like fighting to know what that gun is. And you're like, oh, because it almost builds it up to you. You're like, oh, this must be a big deal. Um, so, so we get to space and we find that, what, what's the, what's the name of the ship again? I mean, the, I lost our, but what's the that? XGP, um, there's some other numbers, but I just, just call X, it the XGP. The XGP. Um, it's a grappler ship. Yeah. It's a little arm. Which is goofy to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's arm. whatever. It's hokey, but it's like the big thing of that show that those are really like special ships that have like the arms that grapple well, in it, space. It's, it's kind of like a. Like almost like a little bit of a uh, cowboy bebop too, because Jet's ship has that little yeah. arm attachment, yeah. and even Faye's got the little. Yeah. She's got little things. <laughs> Jet's, I mean, uh, Spike doesn't have anything on his because his is like a freaking sports car Ferrari. Um, but yeah, everybody else has a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like it's such an interesting parallel to draw with draw with those shows too, because I really feel like they're those two shows are cut from the same cloth. You know, like there's. It's not as big of an emphasis, but the music that they use in Outlaw Star, a lot of that's kind of airs towards the side of like blues and jazz at points, and mm-hmm. you don't really think about it because it's not really built up that acclaim as much as Cowboy Bebop has. Yeah, it's it's not the focus of it exactly, and um, so you know it's just interesting. It's it's a good show. Yeah, uh, it, that's when we find out that the true purpose of uh, the uh, of the Outlaw Star. The XGP. The, the XGP is to find the galactic ley line. Yeah, man. <laughs> which the Frito ley line, which is cool, <laughs> but it's like, well, you have the computer for it. Why don't you just like because it didn't serve the purpose of the show? Way. I guess. I, yeah, but it's one of those. But like, yeah, you're you like have to put her in the is, ship. I mean, she already knows. It's really convoluted. Why does she have to get naked every time she gets in the ship? Melfina is like the brain of the navigation, and you're like, why though? <laughs> uh, which wh- she could just as easily put a helmet on. Yeah, which I mean, the whole point of the galactic ley line, I mean, it's holds like the knowledge of the universe, and it's like a tra- like it's yeah. one of those things where like everybody has their own thing of what the galactic ley line is, exactly, and like nobody knows exactly. It's like uh, have you seen uh, 
Galaxy Quest. Yeah. It's like the the what a pull. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's like the, what the hell is the name of that stupid sp- the, uh, the sphere or whatever. Yeah, the 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 big I thing tell you. at the end where well, they're like, "Oh, it's like the it's the weapon of will destroy the universe and everything." I'm going to kick myself later cuz I'm going to I'm going to remember what the stupid thing is. Um and then, because like everybody thinks it's one thing, it's like, oh no, it, it like sends you back in time like three seconds. <laughs> and you're like, oh, right. and like the galactic lane is like, it's knowledge, it's unlimited power, it's unlimited riches. Like <laughs> nobody knows what the stupid thing is, and they're like, but everybody's trying to get there. Exactly. It's not the Virilium sphere. <laughs> I'm trying to look it up. Now it's not the Virilium sphere. On some quick uh, Google and type stuff here, because that's the stupid thing they get with the little <laughs> blue monster babies. <laughs> No, man, that's funny. What a what a callback to freaking uh, <laughs> Tim Allen's best Galaxy role. Quest. Because <laughs> that was actually, that was actually on that Netflix not that long ago, and I watched it. I definitely watched. But what's it. weird is like I have two <laughs> copies of the stupid movie over there. Um, I'm trying to figure out what it's the, called. The uh, but... dang it! All right, guys, we're not going to cut any of this on the podcast. Oh my god, we're going to leave. Please this do. In. We're going to leave this in. That was some nice uh, podcast silence there. Uh, yeah. Omega thirteen. The omega thirteen. That's okay. it. The omega thirteen. It, t- it reverts time by thirteen seconds. Thirteen seconds. Yeah. It's like that's so stupid. That's all it does. But give us the omega thirteen. And then he asked Justin Long, like, "What does it do?" It's like, "Ah, oh, yeah, it. Uh, no, well, scientists believe that." <laughs> He Justin's ju- long. He, he's best role too. He Justin Long's all over it. What you didn't like Jeepers Creepers? Well, it's what I was like. I, like that was like when <laughs> Justin Long was in every damn thing. He was the back Mac. when Shia when was, was in Mac, everything. Or, was he Mac or PC? He was. He was a Mac. He was a That's Mac. Right. Because PC was like, look, PC is a businessman who has oh, all of, yeah. who has all of his life together, I'm and then creative. And then Mac is a trust fund kid who doesn't actually have to work, who has a podcast. I wish that was me. That's what, right? <laughs> um, uh, so <laughs> then along the way, we meet uh, we meet Hilda, and we well f- uh, f- we meet. Well, she's. I mean, brought I mean them, yeah, Hilda, Hilda. She brought them to the XGP, and but, then unfortunately but, dies. Yeah, she took I, it I, out. I don't know why I was thinking Hilda. We meet. Do we meet Twilight first, or we meet Aisha first? They go back to Earth, and um, no, they have they met. Um, they were attacked by Aisha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on that ship, and they end up meeting back at uh, Blue Heaven. Mm-hmm. They meet and interact there, and then they go back to Earth, and then and that's when that's like, when they meet Suzuka because she's, she's got been the hired. To, she's been hired to kill Fred Lowe. Yeah, oh Fred, Fred oh Ezra, uh, <laughs> Space Dandy. He's basically a Space Dandy. He's he is the da- oh, we should do Space Dandy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a crazy show. It's just. I just love boobies. You have feelings, yeah. He's like, hey, boobies. who doesn't? It's like, where zero G meets double D. One of the <laughs> best lines in a whole entire thing is Space Hooters. That's all it is. But it's like, when oh, zero G meets man. double D. Like, I wish I could have been that narrator. Be like, that would have been the best gig ever. You might know me as the zero G. <laughs> you might know me the guy from boobies. Uh, <laughs> Troy McClure. Oh, God. Um... Because let's see, who uh, she was. So Twilight was hired to, to kill her, Fred yeah. Lowe. And then we meet uh, the McDougals. Yeah, Harry and. Um, uh, remind me of the other one. Uh, Isn't this funny? Like when you watch the show and you're like, I don't I, remember anything uh, at all. Let's see. Uh, Harry and Outlaw Gary. Star, no, that's not it. Outlaw Star. Characters. Ronald. Ron. Harry and Ron McDougal. Yeah, and you know Ron? Like, Ron was the taller one, right? Yeah, so Harry I, was the uh, like the part they, android. He'd been up being android. Yeah, yeah. Ron sounded who had, like who, he had a big he had a crush on Melfina. Yeah, he wanted yeah he, he wanted, wanted to give s- her to the D for he sure. Wanted to, he wanted to set her free. Um, Ron sounded like uh, whoever was the voice actor for that. It really reminded me of James Woods for some reason. Uh, let's like see. every time, like well, I literally watched the show and I was like, "Is James Woods in Outlaw Star?" <laughs> like it's not him at all. It's some other guy, but. The voice for what I don't know if it's like the timbre or what, but like I'm like this dude sounds just like James Woods to me for some reason. Uh, let's see. Ronald McDougal was John Snyder, who was in 
He's been in other stuff. But he was yeah. in Star Trek: The Next Generation. He was in Babylon Five. You oh, remember what? Babylon Five? Vaguely. Uh, let's see. Let's go to his filmography. That's not what I want. Oh, here we go. Uh, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Nothing he was a to... pimp in Crocodile Dundee. Ooh, that's what? all we're gonna look at. He, nice. was a, he was a pimp in Crocodile <laughs> Dundee, and that's all we need from him. Well, yeah, it's just funny because like I remember hearing his voice and be like, "Man, that sounds so much like him." But I looked it up and went, and so I was just like, "Whatever." But you know, those are funny. Like, and their ship was pretty sweet. I thought the gold, the gold ship with like the it came to, like the point. Like, mm-hmm. I thought their ship was ship was pretty dope. I mean, you can just like they got. There's some good bounty hunters out there. Yeah. Like they will they will get the job done. And I love how it it is a like rival relationship with Gene and Ronald. Yeah, but it's also like you guys can't really do anything to each other. Like you guys just just be friends already. <laughs> just be friends already. Like. Like, by, like, the second time that we meet him, it's just like, just be friends already, guys. You're the same, almost. <laughs> Pretty much. Nah, yeah, like, it's cool, because you get a lot of intros right there, and then um, Aisha's so funny, because she just, you know, she tries to really get him, and she just thinks she's, like, this crazy, like, warrior, but she ends up being, like, you know, endeared to them. Um, she, she tries to fight them and then they go to dinner. Yeah. You're like, what the heck? Like, it's like, <laughs> we're going to take you to dinner. I'm like, we'll fight you, but let's eat first. And she's <laughs> like, well, now I can't, I can't fight you guys because you fed me. So I was like, that's how you win. If you ever have an assassin, just take them to eat. Take them to, take them to dinner. Like, Here, took- I'll let you kill me first, but <laughs> let's have some dinner. And then you could, and then they'll be like, and then you stick them with the I'll bill. Be, I'll be your friend. <laughs> Well, Suzuka, that's what Fred should have done to Suzuka. Hmm. Well, yeah. Should have took it to dinner. No, nah, but that was cool because, like. Oh, no. Every... Fred, Fred wasn't going to take no, no girl. Off. Fred was not going to take she her. Took he, was Jean. Gonna, he was going to take Gene to dinner. <laughs> um, but, you know, it serves a purpose because, you know, they need all those provisions for the Outlaw Star. They're trying to get weapons and get it all fixed up, but they don't have the money for it. So Gene's like, dang it. But, you know. Just happenstance, Suzuka's coming to kill um, Fred right when Gene and, and the crew are meeting with Fred, and then he, Gene comes back right when Fred's getting attacked and uh, ends up saving him. So then he gets the stuff that he needed for the ship. You know, it all serves a purpose. Yeah, I, I will say like it's something that I noticed. Like, there's not a lot of like weird stuff in this show. I mean, like there's there's goofy moments, obviously, um, because it's a '90s anime, but there's not a lot of like weird stuff. You know what I mean? Like there's no and, tentacles. Or there's anything. no tentacles. Like there's, n- there's no <laughs> like fan service. Really? There's one episode this. of the fan one service. episode hot springs, which makes no sense. Like it's, I still don't understand why they went there. Well, it's cause they had the caster shells. Remember like that was where, Oh, the, that's right. There was a temple that happened to be on the hot springs Island or planet where like the last people that make the caster shells happen to live so mm-hmm. he, he went up to meet them but yeah you get to see like you get to see you end up seeing like um Aisha. Aisha's, she's just like her hey titty, her titties with I'm no, here she like doesn't have nipples for some reason like or they're like really weird drawn yeah they're like really weirdly drawn like, okay like her nipples are like the same as like her boob I don't know it was funny but I mean that's definitely fan service yeah sure. it's like well, it's it's one of those where you're like, yeah, you know, we have to have an anime. We have to have that, you know, hot spring. Let's throw in episode. our tropes. Yeah. Well, it's always, like, it's always a hot spring. It was like their Tenchi Muyo episode or something. I was like, geez. There was that Tenchi Muyo episode. But it's just the hot springs. It's just a, a trope that they throw in, man, you know? Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that was the purpose for them going to that. Because, you know, at the beginning you're like, what? Why are they, like, why would they possibly be on this like, island? They're literally, like, they're pirates chasing them. Yeah. Like, they are Let's wanted. Let's take a vacation. They're wanted, and you're, they're going to go to the <laughs> most touristy spot <laughs> in the galaxy. Well, That's you... like, it's like in Star Trek. If you're if you're wanted by everybody in the world, it's like, I'm going to go to Risa. You just yeah. hang out there. And you're like, why? <laughs> Sorry, that was a Star trek nerd thing. No, it's okay. I mean, we're talking about Outlaw Star, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Um, but you do get a little bit even more fan service at the end because Gene gets tasked by the people at that temple. There's, like, two guys at one temple, and 
he has to go get like nudes of this other chick that's at another temple that makes caster shells too and um so like they want him to get a like naked footage of her for whatever reason because it's like the dirty old man trope yeah right? so it's he does Roshi. he does and then she like somehow makes the videotape into a bomb and like blows their whole building up but it's just like okay like i don't see the purpose of that but at least he got those shells all right yeah so he got the shells <laughs> they leave and they're like all right and i think asha's just like had too much time in the in the sauna well and there's like a uh there's like this recurring gag throughout the show that sh- that episode where there's like this guy that's like in disguise that's trying to kill gene the entire time <laughs> And he keeps seeing him, and he keeps, like, falling off the mountain, or, like, he falls out of the train and gets knocked out. Like, you're like, what was the purpose of that? Like, they never even address it. Nothing ever comes of it. But you're like, why did they feel like they needed to include that? Just to remind us that they're being hunted, I guess? I don't know. Yeah, and and that's – it's weird because it's one of those where – I I do like what they do in this show, too, is what they do in a lot of those, like, old, old anime. Um, especially whenever you have to do space, they'll show and like it looks like the ship is like standing still, and then somehow there will be a battle, and it's doing like all these flips, and it's yeah, got like, smoke trails, and it's like I, I thought I space love, was a vacuum. He's like, I love when, but I, it's one of those like the same thing they do it with Gundam, they do it in uh, Cowboy Bebop, um, they do it in this, basically anything. Where if, if there's a space battle, <laughs> like. Somehow everything turns into the most maneuverable thing ever imagined. Well, you know what it was? was the little arms. Yeah. They were able to swim through <laughs> space. <laughs> it was like digging that through space. That was always so corny to me. Like, and they would, he, the interface was cool, though. How uh, when Gene would, like, the little yeah, he, like, stick would come out and he would, thing. like, put, hit the little pin and it looked like it was going to poke him in the eye. But, like, it flashed a red screen onto his eye. I'm like, how did you not have a seizure? But... Um, that's like the interface to control the grappler arms and the little battles. They would like grab each other's arms. I'm like, this it's looks so, so weird. It's, that's like, so it's like corny. It's big ship in space. These two big ships and like, <laughs> so corny. Maybe I actually don't like the show that much. I don't know. <laughs> well, so the more that, we talk what, about it, it, the more good, I'm like, eh, I don't know if I like this. But show. It's weird. Cause like, that's what makes it good. <laughs> like it's corny it's like hokey. and you know, yeah. but like, and like, it's goofy, but there's not anything that's weird in it. But when else did you see that? You know what I mean? Like a big grappler, a grappler ship anime. You know what I mean? You mentioned Jets had that, but that wasn't the focal point of the the show. Uh, Gurren Logan did a lot of yeah, that stuff. You but know. they were like, oh, it's a grappler. Like, but uh, yeah, and like they, they, it was one of those who were like, well, this is the universe that you live in. Yeah. Like they didn't make it. It was like, oh my gosh, that ship has arms. It was like, yeah, all the ships have arms here. What's <laughs> What's the deal? Um, and like, and like, I love that they do that here with, they're just like, yeah, no, that's just the way everything is. Like everybody knows it's not weird to anybody. Like if, if, if they would have done a thing where like, yeah, uh, the XGB, it's the only ship that can do that. be like, oh, that's weird. Yeah. Well, it does have like that drive that. Well, yeah, it's got, it's got the the special. Yeah. But it's like, if it was the only ship with like arms that was going to come and hug you, uh, that would be like (laughs) the weirdest thing. But it's like, no, yeah, like. Well, well it was, ships, they, they'll hug you. There was cool I'll lore behind the ship too, because you know when when Hilda's talking about it, she's like, "Oh, it's the the uh, the pirates and the good guys like came together and like made this ship together." Like, what? Like, yeah. why would that possibly be <laughs> what they did to make this ship? Like, that's and so then, weird. And then inevitably, they double crossed each yeah. other. It's like, no, surely not. <laughs> well, it's just. It, I don't know. I mean, and it's cool the way that they break that down. That, that, because that, 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 like, a, that was created by Khan, like Dr. Khan, right? The the ship? The ship. Yeah, like that, the old guy or whatever. Yeah. He was like the mastermind he behind it. He wanted to become like machine god or something. He was, or, he was weird as hell. Yeah. He got absorbed, so who cares? <laughs> <laughs> He's He died. No one cares um, about him. But it was cool that they had like the, you know, they had like the uh, the people that were for like the, the Space Force for good or whatever. And then they had the pirates, mm-hmm. and then the outlaws that were kind of like in the middle. So that was another cool like little way that they broke up, like the way that people are in the universe or whatever. There was a I don't know if it's on the DVD extras because I haven't gotten to it yet, but there was a going to be a spinoff series. Oh yeah, that no, they focused made it. on the cops. Like, did they actually make that? Yeah, um, 
actually uh, wrote a note about it to because I never watched it. It was Angel Links. Is that the one you're talking about? I never watched it, but it was supposed to be if like that's a, the one I'm thinking. That, that that would be hilarious if that's the show I'm thinking of. I'm wondering because it said that it was like a spinoff of it. You said. yeah. I'm wondering if it was that episode um, where they're captured by the space police. And you remember he, like, sees, like, the – they're detained, and there's, like, a man, what was that guy? He was he was a sergeant or something, mm-hmm. but he was, like, a wolf or, like, a dog. Yeah, he was, like, a dog man. I can't, is that what he was? Yeah. Um, Which, again, is one of those, like, not uncommon in this, like, in this galaxy. Well, and Jim said, oh, I've never seen one of those in real life. Like, he talks about – Yeah, but it's, it's a like, known thing. Yeah, it's a known thing. Like, oh, it's just I've like, never yeah, seen I mean, we've just never seen one. Um, well, also, Jim does live on Backwater. Great exposition. Yeah. But uh, I wonder if it's those cops that are, like, the people that end up being, like, the the spinoff or whatever. Yeah, th- that's what it is. Because, like, I remember um, on, on – back when I watched in 2007, on yeah. one of those, like, by, uh, behind-the-scenes ones – they were talking about we were going to focus the series on the like the galaxy police or whatever they were called. Yeah, like this is what the show was going to focus on, and it focused on her and like the main police chick and uh, the dog dogman, um, Walter that, Dogman. Oh, if that was his name, that would be amazing. I, I hope. Not. Um, <laughs> uh, his name was Agent Dogma. Um, <laughs> like that. That was what the whole. That was what the series was about, and like they said that they were going it's same universe and so they there may still be yeah. you know run-ins with the crew of the outlaw star because at the end of the series they if i remember correctly because again I, I haven't watched the last episode yet um if i remember correctly they all go back to the bar and they kind of go their separate ways but then they all meet back at the end and go off on more fun adventures yeah no yeah they do because like I think even Suzuka's like, I don't think I'm going to go. And then does she end up getting back on the ship? I think they all do. Yeah. If, I, if I remember correctly, like it's been 11 years. Um, we should pause this and watch the last episode <laughs> and then come back. Um, oh, because, yeah, you never Yeah, I, I didn't get to finish it. Okay, um, so here's a – sorry to interrupt. but Yeah. Um, they, it talks about – this is an angel link, so it talks about one of the main characters. So her name is Valeria Vertone. Originally appeared in Outlaw Star as a member of a pirate fighting group called Angel Links. And so she's like the leader of her ship. So I don't specifically remember that, to be honest with you. I don't remember that um, either. It wasn't just something rem- that stuck out I to me. I just remember they were talking it was like it's going to be about the cops or or whatever yeah. the good guys I always want to say like ISSP, but that's Outlaw Star. Yeah. That's like it's the basically jet the jet used to be. Yeah, so like also uh, Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. What I said? Yeah, Outlaw Star. Oh, shit. Well, it, it can, it, I mean, <laughs> we're talking about it. Um, well, like, I always go, like, whenever there's, like, a space police force, I automatically go tension. Like, it's the galaxy police. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's uh, kind it's, of like a generic uh, term. It's know? like, what, uh, Hiyoshi and Kione? Oh, yeah. Is that what their name is? And, uh, Tenchi? I'm, Tenchi. See? So. That's another thing, like, I'll remember their stupid names. <laughs> like, stupid but brain. But we can't remember the characters' names from Cowboy Bebop, we, or, uh, Outlaw Star. Yeah. It's, it's We're sitting those... here not remembering, uh. Uh, Harry McDougal's name. Like, what the heck? Well, we remembered Harry. Or Ron McDougal. Yeah, Ron. It's like, oh, yeah, that, that guy. <laughs> it's, like, it's one of those where, like, the show is really good, but when you're wanting to talk about it, you freeze. Whereas, like, I don't want to talk about Tenchi, but I'll tell you everything that happens on Tenchi Muyo, Tenchi in Tokyo. <laughs> the the movie where Tenchi finds his mom and I... has to have his mom get with his dad. And yeah, it's just stupid crap like that. I'll remember that garbage. <laughs> but, but nothing when you're trying to do like the actual talking yeah. about the meat of a show, you're like, and now I don't I, remember anyone's now, name. Now when I want to do a uh, Tenchi Muyo episode, all of that little star will come together. Oh yeah, that's what'll happen. <laughs> Man, that happened. We did an episode on my show. Not to get too much on a tangent, but we did a no, my tangents Hero, welcome. We did a My Hero Academia panel, mm-hmm. and man, like we all watched the show. We're all caught up, and. We couldn't remember anyone's names. And I'm like, man, like, these characters are so good, and we love the show, and we know exactly what's happened every episode, but we just can't remember anyone's names. We're, like, sitting there trying to have to look it up in the middle of it. I'm like, ugh. Well, Please listen to this. Well, well I feel that that <laughs> happens a lot whenever you binge stuff. Yeah, that's true. Where, like, you'll you'll have everything, and you'll know exactly what happens, 
but I've noticed that myself. It hasn't like, been great. I'll, I'll forget. Yeah. What these people are like, I've seen Fate so many, like the Fate series, so many times that I know these people. Um, but I'll watch uh, something like I don't know Outlaw Star. Outlaw Star. I'll watch Outlaw Star and like <laughs> basically watched three to four episodes each night this last week. Yeah, can't remember. Can't anything. remember anybody. That's like, the nature. I of remember it. how the story goes, but it's like. Yeah, what was, what was that well, person's name? Yeah, when we watched, uh, when we when you did the episode when you're on my show, we talked about all star for a second, and neither of us could remember Melfina's name. Yeah, and so we're like, dang it! But you know what I think it is, I, and I think you're right. It's like the the binging, because back when we originally watched these shows, we're watching every week or every day mm-hmm. for Cowboy Bebop, especially. You only saw that on Saturday night, yep. so you're like. You know, you really that stuff really sticks with you. You know, mm-hmm. I still remember Vicious and Julia and Jet and Ed, like every character in that I can like think of off top. Even like Cowboy Andy, like oh, I love Cowboy. Yeah, Andy. you like you remember which is, wh- you remember which, everything. Which which fun fact? Cowboy Andy is uh, that Darren guy who was married to that's that's the voice of Cosmo. Oh, okay. That's Cowboy Andy. Wow. So yeah, because it was uh uh what's his name. The guy that he was married to the girl. That yeah, who's married to Major, who is now, is now engaged, engaged to Steve, Steve Bloom. Bloom. So who was th- Spike? Exactly. So oh that, my god, that, that that was the episode that I was thinking. It was like that was the that cowboy. So they're rivals in real life. Exactly. <laughs> well, I don't know anymore. They've been they were, they've been divorced for a while. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's one of those where I think now the culture. Of what we watch because everything is now given to us. Oh yeah, it's like whereas like hit when, a button, you when watch we were growing show. up, yeah. it was very much you have to wait. Oh yeah, like you'll maybe get like one episode a week, or in some tsunami cases, you'll get an episode a day, which is nice. But then you'll have those other times when you're like, well, you gotta wait. Oh yeah, now the Saturday it's like, night block stuff especially. And now like, and I think Netflix is kind of – well, it's not just Netflix. It's like everybody's kind of ruined us where it's just like here's everything. The age of now. It's like yeah. here's everything. Go. Here's the entire series in one go and mm-hmm. you just watch and you it just, as like, you watch want. watch it all and you're like, oh, this is cool. Like, oh, uh, The Secret Life of Psyche K. Watched all of that. Loved it. Laughed at it. I remember Psyche. That's the only character I remember. <laughs> I remember what the like, – I remember who the other characters are. Cannot tell you their names. I can tell you their voice actors – Cannot tell you their names, man. And I do I really do think that's what it is, though. Is that you know we just we're so used to having it right now. Like let's go. Like I could go and I'm gonna go finish uh, Fate because we're gonna talk about it, you know, in an upcoming episode. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna be remiss to like try to remember everyone's names. Like I'm gonna come with notes probably that, so I can make sure I keep my stuff on point. But well, that's uh, that's good. Well. The fate comes out before this episode. Yeah. Oh, does so, it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, so because yeah, because we're because we've got a thing with Bryce on that one. Oh, so that's right. We're putting well, you him can in. This. That's fine. Um, nah, no, I'm, we're kidding, I'm kidding. kidding. <laughs> we're kidding. I don't edit. Are you kidding me? Listen to Avatar season three. Yeah. Let's you can you can right you can tell we're like I edited and my claps are there <laughs> and you're like oh he was supposed to put honor but he never did. That's but, okay. Nah. Um, because again, super lazy. Uh. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, but, I mean, it's one of those where we've seen, like, um, I keep saying one of those where. I don't know why I say that. Um, but it's one of those where uh, Graham and I have seen that show so many times, and we both really love it, that instead of rewatching it, he's playing the light novels. So, I mean, or he's he's going through yeah. that portion. So, playing the light novels. he's It's playing the visual novels, reading the light novels. Was it that initially, and then it was adapted into a show, or what? Well, it was originally a game, oh, okay. so it was it was a computer game, and then it was adapted into an anime. So they had the had the game; it was really popular. So they took the most popular at the time of the storylines, made it into a light novel, made it into a manga uh, or a manga, and manga. then made the original Fate Stay Night anime. Then they were like, "Okay, we need a backstory because people really like this." So then they made. Fate Zero. Oh, so they started going all like Star Wars on it, mm-hmm. giving the prequels. Which Fate Zero is fantastic. You were saying that that was yeah. one of your favorite ones. Well, yeah, it's like I love the story of Unlimited Blade Works, but then 
It's good. I like the servants like more it. in Fate Zero. Yeah, the servants are pretty dope. Um, it's probably one of my favorite just aspects see, of the show so just far. Just it's one of those, like, in Fate Zero, like, you have more interactions with the servants. In Unlimited Blade Works, it's mostly the... It's, it's just the main two. Yeah. And that's it. But everybody else, it's like, yo, yeah, you figure everything out. And you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> this guy with Johnny Young Bosch. That guy's a real dick. <laughs> is like, that Johnny Young Bosch? Johnny Young show? Bosch is in it. Yep. Man. Okay. And I think I t- talked to you about I was watching the uh, the sub because I didn't realize it was on Netflix. Yeah. So I was watching the sub on BRV. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I love that damn show. It's so. Good. It's good, man. Um. But yeah, it's like one of those like I watched that. I've seen it multiple times, so I know the characters. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've but just off topic stuff. Can't... But yeah, off topic. Yeah. Like I can like I can tell you psyche. <laughs> that's it. I can see, and he has a mom, and he has a dad, and that's all. That's all I can tell you about that show. That's funny. Um, yeah, it's 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 weird, and I I like that we have access to everything now so readily, but it is a you know it is kind of like to it's me double edged sword. It's yeah, it's very much a catch twenty two. It's like you get everything, you won't remember anything. Yeah, like you'll remember the plot, you won't remember any of the characters. That's true. Which sucks, but. That is definitely, I think, the main uh, drawback of it is that, you know, back then these – and I've talked about this before, but it's like an event whenever you're watching these shows yeah. when you're a kid. Because every Saturday night I'm like, I need to mess around and get my Cheetos and my Dr. Pepper and be ready, like have my doctor, my backup soda ready, like because – at 10 o'clock or whatever time it was like bebop's on inuyasha's on right after that like i like had built that like i made like scheduled i guess scheduled my whole day around like watching this stuff like yeah, so you, you have your saturday morning cartoons in the morning and then you're like okay well i know after those i've got my anime at night so that's my before bed exactly and so you know there's something about that you know making it it was more of an event to me because you're like Okay, I know exactly where I need to be at what time, and you know, let's get it. Let's get this. Uh, let's get these shows watched. But it makes it stick out to you so much more. I think. You yeah, know, it really ingrains it. In That's why like, people be, always remember yeah, that old stuff. Have like, it high they always recall, remember the stuff when you were younger. Um, I couldn't tell you the last time I watched Bebop all the way through, but you know, we could probably pick out something out of every episode and be like, "Yeah, I remember that." <laughs> I remember when they had to fight that. Uh, expired meat. Yeah, that was not, yeah. You you remember that episode? And it's like yeah, I remember that. Remember the one where they all got high on mushrooms? You remember mushroom, that one? Mushroom samba. Yep, that's the name of that episode. It's it, you, <laughs> like you remember stuff, and you're like, I oh, yeah, starts yeah. hopping around when he's crack, high. Crack, that crack, crack, crack. It's me so up. good. Um, like to me, like I I remember like the reason I got so ingrained in electronics. Yeah, is because I had to learn because like I didn't get picked up from school until late because my parents um at the time i was living in shawnee and they worked in midwest city so they worked at tinker so it was a drive for them to get there so i never got home when i needed to um so during that tsunami so i learned how to program a vcr yeah so it's like it's one of those like kids don't have to do that these days it's like the classic like that it was like that classic classic old joke of you know, oh, I can't program my VCR. And like, that used to be ask, an old joke in shows, and now and if you show that like, to a kid now, they'd be everybody, like, what's a VCR? And just, but you just, like, ask one of your kids. I'm like, yeah. they know how to program that VCR because they want to watch stuff. Like, that's what it's like. Whenever uh, the electricity went out and it was, like, blinking, it was like, I have to reset this right now <laughs> because if something breaks, I want to make sure I've got my stuff going. Yeah. It's good old times. VCR, and now it's, just and now like, it's DVR. Yeah, now it's just like, well, I mean, people don't even use DVR anymore. People don't watch TV. Yeah, for the people most just like, part. Netflix. Yeah. Because everything's there. Netflix and chill. Yeah. Oh, man. All right, so, I mean, we, we talked about Outlaw Star ish. Some. We, we talked ish about Outlaw Star. <laughs> we talked around it. We talked around Outlaw Star. Um, no, I mean, I, I think we hit our favorite. I mean, to me, like, uh, always is still going to be my favorite episode is the the gym and the little girl oh yeah that's still my favorite episode of that whole entire series i came into this knowing like i better 100 percent mention that episode because yeah. that's my favorite episode you have any other things that you want to hit on no i mean to me the only other thing is that i felt really 
it felt really anticlimactic when they finally got to the ley line. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, okay, like, all right, this is such a big deal. And now it's like, and nothing even really came of it. Yeah, well, that that's one of my problems with, um, one of my favorite animes is Last Exile with uh, Johnny Young Bosch. Um, <laughs> The problem with that show is like it's two characters the whole entire time, Klaus and Lobby, and that is what the whole show is based on. It's about their relationship and them trying to do what their fathers couldn't do. Yeah. Like both of their dads went to go find this basically along the lines of the galactic ley line. Almost the exact same thing. They went to find this, and it's very steampunky. It's super cool. I love it. Huh. Um they go to find it and they can't then they die in the process so that's the majority of our story and then towards the end they just like take klaus and lavi and like throw them in the background and then these other people that were like i mean i guess your your stuff is kind of important and then it's very it just like ends and mm-hmm. you're like oh <laughs> i mean you felt like you were like, oh, I we guess. started out one like, way and I, ended another. Yeah, it's like I don't, I don't understand what, how, like I don't, I don't get it. And it just, yeah, it just like abruptly is like, yeah, we're done. And you're like, but what really got resolved? Like, oh, nothing they really. Like ran out of time and they're like producing it or something. And then they did it. They did a sequel series okay. like ten years later. Yeah, see, that's called, probably what happened. Yeah, Last Exile, Fam of the Silver Wing. And I'm like, okay, cool. And it's about a little girl. But that, that, and that was in that time where when Japan was releasing like sequels to popular anime, but instead of being like your main, your main character was a male. A whole different, yeah. Female character. Yeah. Like they did it with Soul Eaters. Like Soul Eater not, it's the same, you know, basically thing, female characters. Uh, Fooly Cooly. It's always about Nauta. Female character. Which, oh man, we're going to get on weird stuff. I'm going to get a lot of hate, which I like. <laughs> but then there's part of me that's like, but your original story was good enough. You didn't need to extend it. And it's not about them putting like, now we have a female character. Or I'm not getting on that. I just don't understand why we would continue. Yeah, like what was the point? The series. Yeah. Like the series ends like fully coolly. It should only ever be six episodes. Now they've got two new series out. Yeah. And I'm like, but why though? But well, yes, I For why? What like it was it ended perfectly. The same thing with uh, like Last Exile. To me, I was like, it ended. I don't want any more of it. That's why I've not watched Fam. Like I love Last Exile. I'm not going to watch it cuz I'm like, to me it ended. It's just cuz they, you know, and they get in this thing where people ask for this stuff. It's just like with the Star Wars thing. People that was like the bo- most beloved film series arguably of all time. And, you know, people are saying, we want more, we want more, we want more. They make the prequels, and then everybody hates them. And it's like, well, you wanted this content. Like, why are you, like... And they think that they know that people are like, oh, they, this is a really big thing. Let's make some more of it. Make make some more money off of it. Mm-hmm. They end up bastardizing the thing that you really enjoyed. I mean, like, we're, we're talking about this new Star Wars. It's like, Star Wars ended after Return of the Jedi. I mean, that ended great. But, I mean, you still have, like, a fleet of, like... Star Destroyers yeah. upstairs, but whatever. Um, but, like, <laughs> it ends, and you're like, okay, good. But then people are like, we want more, more, more. Like you said, they get the prequels. And like, we don't want the prequels. We want more we want after. And then they give us 7, 8, 9. And people are like, oh, we hate these now. Yeah, and you're like, what? But you wanted more Star Wars. And the Wars. characters in that show getting, like, destroyed Death. on twi- on Twitter and stuff. And like, like, Yeah, Kelly Marie Tran had to <laughs> leave, and I'm just that like. That was crazy. Poor girl. I, mean, I didn't like her that much in that movie too. But god dang, like I didn't go. Tell yeah, her to like, go kill herself. You, it's like if you like, don't like dang. a character, it's like. Well, I mean, here's the thing. It's like I don't like the character. I don't like the movie. I just didn't like the way that the movie was done. Yeah. But like, that's not any of the actors' faults. Like you're given a role. Like the same thing. Like the people that hate dub actors. Exactly. And it's soapbox time. The people that hate like dub actors. I'm like, they're just they're just reading a script, guys. I mean. That's all. That's all they're doing. They're bringing the thing that you enjoy to a wider audience. Mm-hmm. Or like the like. Uh, did you hear the whole big hubbub with Voltron this last season of yeah. Voltron? That whole thing and, and like dudes getting death threats and everything. And like writers, I'm just like a cartoon show. I'm like, he just read his lines, man. Calm down. He's not. It's a cartoon show. Yeah. It's like, like you're gonna just, kill this guy. Calm down. Just calm down, everybody. I mean, 
everybody be chill. Just be happy we get content. Just everybody well, just, just be happy we get content. That's kind of where I like live. That's like my realm. I'm like, dude, just if it's cool, just watch it. If you don't like it, then shut up. Yeah, it's like you don't have to go hate on it. There's so much crap out there. It's like go watch something else. <laughs> you don't gotta watch this. Not. Like if you don't like uh, BoJack Horseman. But like, don't go on forums and stuff and be like, this show is garbage and blah, blah, blah. I don't know anyone that doesn't like BoJack Horseman. But, like, you're like, this is... Blah, blah, well, like, insert any proper... I'm sure yeah. there's people... There's people that don't like Cowboy Bebop or Outlaw Star. That's fine. Yeah. If it's not for you, then that's fine. But it's Just like, people somewhere. make it their life mission. Like, I'm going to bring down this property on my own. I'm like, no, you're not. Like, like if, if, they if, don't care. They got paid at the end of the yeah, day, except, whether except you hate it or like it. They've already been paid. And like, yeah. They're gonna be, oh, we're going to garnish fine. your pay because this guy in Cleveland, Ohio, didn't like your movie. Like, that's not going to happen. Yeah. It, it's weird, but it's just like, you know, that's that section of fandom that is everywhere no matter what you like. It's like the toxic fandom, you know? Yeah. We could go on for hours about toxic fandoms. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's just the... It's everywhere. It's a culture that we have now. It's the people that won't come watch Akira, even if it's dubbed. Mm-hmm. It's like just because just it's dubbed. Be happy you get to watch something, man. <laughs> like that's kind of where I land on it. I'm like, dude, like, especially with a lot of stuff we've been doing up at the tower, you know, like, when else are you gonna be able to watch? So, you yeah, know, your, Gundam your Wing. Name, your name's not coming your back name. on. Like, they're not gonna put Gundam Wing back on the big I screens. Know, anytime. Princess Mononoke. Like, come on, dude. In the neighborhood theater, you can yeah. go there and go to a bar right next door. Like that's amazing. Like when else are you gonna get to the Iron Giant was the first like, time. Like I, I, I wish I would have gone awesome. with you guys uh, to uh, to the pump after like when we saw your name. Oh yeah, yeah, I we were going to, over I the just bar. I had to train new people. Nah, it's all good. Otherwise, I mean, because like I was like that way. Like I don't drink only because like I don't like the taste um, unless it's super fruity. Yeah. Then I'm because if I can't taste alcohol. Do your thing, I'm man. in there, man. You like if I can't taste Cosmo it, Cosmo and you've been all right. Oh, dude, yeah. Like anything, like like I said, like fruity stuff. Anything that's mixed with chocolate. They have the Black Betty there at the pump, and that's a A one uh, cocktail. I have to admit, <laughs> has like uh, blackberry and stuff in it. Yeah, so it's like I I like like I like stuff like that. Like that was like the one re- like one of the main reasons we wanted to do the podcast. Like because we'll watch something and we come and talk about it, and then we it's just fun. everything just kind of goes off from there. Yeah, it's like started this. Wanted to talk about Outlaw Star, and then we talked about the whole Netflix thing, and then it's like now we talked about toxic fandoms, and now we're talking about you know watching your name and going to a pub or the pump, not the pub. <laughs> <laughs> they don't serve food. <laughs> they serve food at the pump. Yeah, man. It's a pub. They have a whole <laughs> menu like a, a different. They have like vegetarian. So it's Thursdays. like a gastro pub type thing. Kinda, yeah. I mean, okay. it's pretty dope. And then they have pie every day from Pie Junkie. Pie Junkie. So this is our, uh, this is our the pump uh, commercial right here in the middle of a animation station. This episode brought to you by the pump. <laughs> Get your pump on. Twenty third and Walker. Um. Yeah. So it's like that's the type of episodes that I like. Um. Cause, and and that's one of the reasons like, I didn't want to. I I never have wanted to do a show where it's. We're only going to talk about this. And that is it. Nothing else. Oh, yeah. Because then it's just like everything just seems forced and nobody's comfortable. Exactly. But you make it like a conversation. Exactly. It's fun. And then everything just kind of branches off the way it branches off. Uh, speaking of branching off, let's go ahead and end this thing because we've been going too long. That's okay. <laughs> uh, no, bad. Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> are you kidding me? Nah, it's always kidding. me. <laughs> if, if we go off on a tangent, it's me. Um, Harold, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, dude. Where can everybody find? Blah, 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 blah. Where can everybody find your stuff? Yeah, so you can follow the podcast. We're on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. It's Tunes Tunes Podcast, T U N E S slash T O O N S, and then you can also listen to us on Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And we will put all of those links in the show notes. All you have to do is click on that, click on whatever you want, give Harold a follow. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Josh L. Kane. You can find the podcast on Instagram at Animation Station Podcast on Facebook and Tumblr at Animation Station Podcast. Twitter at Animate Podcast. Find all of our episodes, iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, Google Play, uh, whatever your favorite podcatcher is. Uh, also, all of our episodes available on AnimationStationPodcast.com. Um, be sure and go to iTunes, like and subscribe, and leave a review for Tunes Tunes, and leave a review for the Animation Station, because that's how we know that you guys are out there and care. 
Are you out there? Is anybody out there? <laughs> uh, yeah, Harold, this was fun. Yeah, man, thanks we'll, for having me out. Yeah, we'll do dub versus sub. That'll be a... Yeah, that'll be fun. That'll be that'll fun. Be, that'll be fun. That'll be when Josh may not make it home. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get beat in the parking lot. Nah, it, it'll be it'll be a cool it'll be a civil conversation. The yeah. sub levels will come out and we're Tanya Harding me right before the show, and I'm just <laughs> like, oh, why, why? <laughs> <sighs> this episode brought to you by Nancy Kerrigan. <laughs> <laughs> She's still doing stuff. I don't know. I don't know. She was in those like Ice Princess movies. Was she? Yeah, My she's God. like a judge, and it's like Judge Nancy Kerrigan. I'm like, oh, cool. Kids don't know who Nancy Kerrigan is. I don't know. All right. So for the Animation Station Podcast, I'm Josh. Oh, and I'm Harold. (laughs) Sorry, let me just, let me give you a little bit of buffer there. I'm Harold. Bye, everybody. Oh, wait, you know what we didn't do? We didn't rank out Lost Star. What? We didn't rank out Lost Star. Where do you rank it as? Uh, So on the show... Thanks for listening to the show. I listen to it. Uh, we rank everything on a scale of one to five. That's right. So, like, I have Dipper Pines. Hannah has uh, Moon Wands. Um, Ashley has, I don't remember. Um, but, yeah, so we rank everything like that. So, what is your ranking system? Oh, like on my show? Uh, I mean, yeah, your show. You can, you can have really it on this show. It, but... you, can have, you can have it on this show. Um... Out of five. So, like, mine's, you know, like I said. Uh, Gavin's was uh, Jiminy Crickets. So what would be your rating system that you would rate things on? Huh. Well, I've never done that, but I would probably do just like like a like must-see or something. Like down to forget about this one or something You're like that. you killing me here, man. You're I don't know. Me. Like I've never done like a ranking. We always just have like the conversation. About one it. being piss poor. Two being fantastic. I mean, no. Yeah, one Dang, being that's a big two jump. Being fantastic. Three being eh. Four being gross. And five being eh. What? what? No. <laughs> Screw it. Josh cut all that crap. All right. Bye, everybody. God. Sorry, Josh. No, it's fine. I put you, I put you on the spot. Yeah, that's my bad. So let's just, let's just do this here. So for the Animation Station podcast, I'm Josh. I'm Harold. Bye, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.